What's up guys, Bunks here and welcome back to the channel. So today I thought I'd do something a little different and try and explain how procedural generation works in No Man's Sky, which of course allows the guys over at Hello Games to create one of, if not the biggest game ever created in terms of the number of planets, systems, galaxies and so on. So how exactly did Hello Games create a universe with 18 quintillion planets, that is 18 zeros, and over 250 galaxies. Well, I hope to try and dissect that in this video, so stick around until the end to get a full understanding of it. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get stuck in. So you'll probably realise that so much of No Man's Sky is procedurally generated, but maybe not quite how much indeed. All of the following in this list are procedurally generated, but the list is in fact far bigger. But here are just a few, some are obvious, but some may come as a surprise, things that are procedurally generated in the game. All the galaxies are, of course, however the first five galaxy names are in fact named by Hello Games but the rest of the names are procedurally generated. So the layout and the types of star systems are procedurally generated, so that's like blue, red, green, yellow, the names of the star systems, the number of planets and moons within a star system, the biomes and the size of the planets within a star system, the resources on the surface of the planet, and so on. The starships that you come across in the space stations and trade terminals are also procedure generated and the trades on any trade terminal you come across in the game are as well. Structures and mission locations are, upgrades for your starship, multi-tool, exocraft and exosuit on the space station, and one that may come as a surprise but since the Beyond update any player's starting starship is procedurally generated would you believe. And as I said, the list of procedurally generated content in No Man's Sky is in fact much bigger than this, but it does give you a rough idea of how vastly used procedural generation is in the game. So, what exactly is procedural generation? Well, unlike in a lot of games, the teams will work together to design and build the map, everything in the game manually. But procedural generation is a method of creating data using algorithms instead. So in the context of gaming, it will use these algorithms to create all sorts of things like 3D models, so like flora and fauna that you're going to see on the planet, along with textures, so like the biomes you'll see on planets. And that includes the ground, so whether it isn't covered in rocks, grass, water and so on, along with the terrain, so whether or not a planet is re relatively flat or incredibly mountainous. Another thing you may notice that compared to other games you have on either your console or PC that No Man's Sky takes up a relatively little disk space in comparison and that is because one of the main advantages of using so much procedural generation is that the file size would be far smaller. And that is because most things are created on the fly. A couple of other advantages of procedural generation are you can have much larger amounts of content which is of course why No Man's Sky is so damn big and it also allows for less predictability of gameplay. Of course, procedural generation is not without its downsides however, whilst there are 18 quintillion planets within No Man's Sky, they are all calculated based on a finite number of predetermined assets such as basic creature shapes or planetary biomes. Effectively that means once you've played the game for a certain number of hours like I myself have, all the different planets you visit will have similarities with many other planets you've already visited in the past. That could contribute to the reason why, although No Man's Sky has had a whole bunch of new features added over the years, that it's still described as some by as wide as an ocean but as deep as a puddle. That basically means the game is so incredibly vast but it won't take you that long until you've actually done most of the things in the game and now you're just exploring for the sake of exploring. Now Hello Games thankfully did in fact have the foresight to enable more assets and features be added to the game through updates, which is what we've been seeing for the last 6 years or so means that puddle is getting slowly deeper as we go on. So how does procedural generation actually work? Well there are a lot of complicated terms coming up but I'll try and put them into layman's terms for you. So first of all procedural generation are two big words for one simple thing and that is the creation of data by a computer. You'll notice that when you're flying on down to a planet the closer you get the more detailed the planet becomes so you'll start to be able to see plants and other procedural generated things and most of this generation is done by something called fractals. I won't fully go into fractals but because we'll be here all day, but the short version is every part is self-similar to every other part. So an example of this could be branches on a tree, so the smaller branches have a similar structure and appearance to the larger branches and inevitably the trunk of the tree, but they are in their own way slightly different. Guys over at Hello Games probably use these fractals in slight regularities to create mountainous terrain and various other assets in No Man's Sky. Fractal formulas can be described as recursively, which basically means that from a small branch on a tree we can find a set of instructions to create the other branches and eventually the entire tree. And the same can be said for when starting from a triangle and eventually be able to create the entire planet's terrain from that starting point. 
The advantages of using these fractals is that we can create these instructions to always generate the same image. So that's how when you go back to a planet, it will always look the same. And it's also how other players will see exactly the same as what you do and not something totally different. Seemingly how Hello Games would be able to create so many planets using very little memory and it's likely that they use some sort of a unique key, perhaps a GUID or something like that, which can be translated into a bunch of variables, which then create that same planet again and again, rather than something totally different each time. So how is it possible for Hello Games to use this method to create a whopping 18 quintillion planets that are self-similar yet slightly unique in their own way? Well, let's talk about just lush biomes here as an example. As of the creation of this video, there are 11 different types of lush biomes that can have a possible 10 different types of weather. Now, let's say there are 100 different types of terrain that you can find on lush biomes, and that's already 11,000 unique possible combinations of a lush biome. Now, add that to just the colour of the terrain. Let's say there are even only 20 different options for the colour of the land and 20 different options for the colour of the water. It's likely more than that in the game, but those combinations already take you up to 4.4 million different possible lush planets, and we haven't even begun to talk about the flora and fauna. If you have just 100 different possibilities of each flora and fauna, it's probably more, but that's already 44 billion different combinations of lush planets alone. So you can probably see where this is going, this is likely how Hello Games have managed to create a universe with 18 quintillion planets, each in its own unique in some way or another, but because the amount of assets they use for all the aspects of the planet isn't exactly a mind boggling number, that is why after a certain amount of playtime in the game you'll start to recognise certain aspects on planets that you've seen on others. But of course, if in the future Hello Games decide to add more assets, planets you see will eventually become more and more unique. Now, as Hello Games are a relatively small team compared to a lot of other game developers, I personally would like to see third party integration feature with No Man's Sky, meaning that game artists, and well, anyone really with an artistic nature, would be able to add more assets for creatures and planet biomes, but in the game become, can become more and more unique. Is that something you guys would like to see? Now, No Man's Sky was not the first game to have procedural generation, nor will it be the last, but it certainly is the game which has used it on the largest scale, at least as of the creation of this video, and I have immense respect for the team over at Hello Games because it is an incredible achievement for such a small amount of people to create such a large game and utilising procedural generation on this scale is nothing short of remarkable. It is incredibly difficult to implement a game like No Man's Sky, like outside of YouTube I'm a software developer, not one for gaming but still only barely understand the basics of procedural generation and how it's implemented, so even though No Man's Sky isn't without some of its issues, it truly is a great technical achievement, so massive kudos to the guys at Hello Games for not only creating it but continuously updating it for free. And that folks is a small dive in how procedural generation works in No Man's Sky, allowing for Hello Games to create a universe containing 18 quintillion self-similar planets. There is of course a lot more to it than this, but we'd be here all day and all of our brains will be overloaded with technical jargon. So with that, if you enjoyed this video and you're still here, it'd be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. I do many other No Man's Sky videos like beginner guides, amazing locations, update rumours, glitches and more, so you don't want to miss out on those, right? And as always, thank you for watching and catch you next time.